planet Earth. Just on its own is a strange and mysterious place. And we live here. Sometimes when we are looking for answers to some of these Earth mysteries, we tend to look to the stars. I know that there are those who credit our ancestry and some of these Earth mysteries to those who may reside in the stars. Now, when thinking about that, think about this. Of the few established planets in our solar system, because there are many more in our solar system than we are being led to believe, but of those few, how much do we really know about each one? Think about that. How much do we really know about Mars, besides that it's red and the fourth planet? Honestly, how much do we know about our own moon? You know, when you hear people talking about things like Planet X, we all want to know what's going to happen to the Earth. But wait a second. These other planets, Mars, Jupiter, our moon, if something like Planet X could devastate our planet, then what's it going to do to these other planets that we have a kind of codependency with? See, these planets, this solar system, has a balance that keeps Earth the way it is. It is designed that way. Look at our solar system and tell me it isn't intelligently designed. Are you with me so far? Oh, we have quite a bit to discuss. And I want to take a closer look at the elephant in the room. And that is the gas giant we know to be Jupiter. And again, how much do we really know about this planet? And how does its existence affect the Earth? And I, watching over us. So I'll just say this, if there were a significantly large planet-like object approaching from somewhere outside but close to our solar system, a good way to detect something like that on the approach would be to look at Jupiter. It is the largest planet with the strongest magnetic field, which means when something disrupts Jupiter's magnetic field, it shows. And like our planet, Jupiter has auroras which are a great indicator of the presence of high amounts of radiation. By the way, I'm not saying that Jupiter hasn't always had auroras, but I don't remember this being part of Jupiter's look up until recently. And we are supposed to act like, oh, that happens all the time. But before I get into that, let's just go over a bit of what we know about this planet. It is the fifth and largest planet in our solar system and it's apparently the oldest, the first of our planets to be formed. Now, Jupiter is the fourth brightest object in the sky. So it stands to reason that it was observed by many, probably since the beginning of mankind, because Jupiter has no discoverer, like many of the other planets. You know, we credit the moon for affecting certain dynamics of the Earth, such as the ocean tides, but we only credit Jupiter for keeping the asteroid belt in check. But back in the time of the Sumerians, the Babylonians, they credited Jupiter for affecting their weather. Now, why would anyone get the idea that something as far away as Jupiter, something that looks just like another star in the sky to the naked eye, why would anyone get the idea that it would affect our weather? They credited it for the swelling of the Euphrates River. Now, that sounds like something the moon would do. Well, what if I told you that a long time ago, you could see Jupiter in the sky, just like you can see the moon? Now, I'm sure it wouldn't have looked this big in the sky, and it makes it seem far-fetched, but Jupiter doesn't really have to be that much closer to us for it to be a quarter of the size of the moon, which is big enough. By the way, because of the sun, if Jupiter were close enough to be around the size of the moon, 
it probably wouldn't look like Jupiter. It would probably look like just another sun, like in that movie, remember? Yes, the Sumerians and Babylonians knew about Jupiter. They were tracking it. They called it the White Star. For example, there is an ancient tablet that has geometrical calculations of Jupiter's positioning over a period of time. Now, the last time I checked, neither of those civilizations used telescopes. We have Galileo and Hans Lippershe in the early 1600s, but that's when we're talking just about patents. You can't sit there and tell me that these ancient civilizations studied the stars, invented astronomy and astrology, and no one ever said, boy, I sure wish I could take a closer look at that. I guess we'll never get to see what's up there. The Sumerian said this, right? I could give you the pieces to a telescope without any instructions, and I'm sure you'd figure it out. This is not a complex machine. Well, the big ones are, but you get the point. And so with that, if they had the technology to stargaze, then they would probably have designated areas for prime viewing back then as well. How many of these ancient sites served as old observatories? And just like the capstone of the Great Pyramid, the instrument was removed. But aside from all that speculation, the Babylonians wouldn't have called it Jupiter. No, that name was given by the Romans after one of their lowercase g's. See, first it was the Sumerians, not really an empire yet. Then the Akkadians spawned from them as the first empire. And when that empire fell, Babylon or Babylonia, along with the Assyrians, took over. So here's what's interesting, folks. Are you ready for this? In those days, people had an understanding of astronomy and also astrology. They knew that certain things were happening to planet Earth right around time periods when constellations and certain stars held certain positions. They had a whole science behind this. They also, of course, associated these celestial bodies with their gods. So, for Jupiter, at the time of the Babylonians, the planet was associated with the god Marduk. Now, who was Marduk? And this is where you have to pay close attention. Remember I said in another video, Marduk is also the Egyptian god Ra, who is also the Greek god Zeus, and finally the Roman god Jupiter. There is another name for Jupiter, a Sumerian name, Solpai, and in Africa it's Soropai, and there they called the planet Yaw. In Kemet it would be Heru or Horus, the son of Osiris, yeah, I know it's confusing, right? Especially when they throw Yah in there. Well, one of the other names for Jupiter coming out of Assyria is, guess what? Nibiru. Now, I know what you're thinking, but this is defined in Assyrian literature. And the description is the same. It's a fairing or crossing star. It moves at a noticeable pace across the sky over a period of time also described as a red star. Now, Zachariah Sitchin describes Nibiru as the 12th planet, according to some Sumerian documents. And Assyrian records say it's the same as Jupiter. So, which is it? Let me point out that something is happening with Jupiter, just like something is happening here. If something were to happen to Jupiter, if it moved out of position, Jupiter, being disrupted in any way, should be a major concern for us. Let me just give you a few tidbits about this place. So, unlike Mars, Jupiter is a planet that cannot be visited. The intensity of Jupiter's magnetic field is so great that it would flatten a semi-truck. Not to mention that the entire planet is one gigantic storm system held together by dense mass in the center. Very little solid surface. We don't know how many moons there are, but we do know that it's well over 79. Now, the great red spot on the planet is a storm system of two jet streams locking in winds of over 400 miles per hour. They have estimated that this storm has been around some 300 plus years, 
and has stayed pretty consistent ever since, until recently. Now, a group of amateur astronomers noticed that the red spot looked different as if it were shrinking or disintegrating. It looked as if red flakes of the storm were shedding off of it. So they took these findings to the space agency, not as if they didn't know about it already. And in response, NASA just explained it away. It's always doing this. This is not unusual at all. The head of the Outer Planet Program actually told these astronomers, amateur or not, that they were all mistaken. I guess what they were witnessing was an illusion of sorts. You know, Jupiter is a mystery planet. They didn't even know the composition up until the mid-90s, and they still don't know how big the core is or if there even is a core. And the biggest problem is that they cannot come to any explanations of how such a planet could come to exist in the first place. And this is the problem you run into when you think that everything in the universe was naturally formed, just because, for no reason. This entire solar system and everything in it is an accident, folks. Somehow, some way, we are the result of a great spontaneous accident. Jupiter has a purpose. We know this. NASA is just going to continue to blow smoke up our holes while there are some serious things happening out there that I truly feel we need to not ignore. The auroras, the changing storm systems, how are the moons reacting? I think it's time we start paying attention to things we didn't pay too much attention to before because they were just always there, chilling in the background. But they're not chilling in the background anymore. Things are happening. Things are being stirred up and activated. The heavens are shaking. Jupiter is a fast spinning planet. It's like a gaseous engine out there. A massive powerful force that we cannot afford to have it shift gears on us. Even a slight shift could have devastating effects on us. On the entire solar system. If something affects Jupiter, then Jupiter is affecting everybody. I'm going to get into this a bit more, but we need to go over some other things before we take it there. One being the topic of Mars. Strange times are ahead of us, and these planets are telling us, they are signaling us. Maybe more of us need to turn our attention to the noise. Until next time folks, hang tight. There is more madness to come, whether it's coming from here or out there. Maybe our biggest threat is staring right at us.